All right, everybody. Uh, I haven't put a video up in a couple of days, or actually about a week now, and I wanted to uh, do an kind of an update of what's going on. Uh, the weather is, we're having quite a bit of weather, but everyone is. All that nice, wonderful water there. Um, got a couple things I want to put in this video, but this is pretty much the start of it. We had rain all night, and then it was freezing rain all day. Or it, it was raining, but it was freezing. Then it kind of all melted off, and then it started uh, freezing again. Text message there. And now it's snowing. So this is kind of some of our uh, crazy weather that we get. My lake is back at my shop. I gotta do some drainage control. But uh, yeah, it's we had a nice, I feel like last week was warm, but I don't really remember at this point. Uh, I, I think it was fairly decent because I ordered a bunch of cattle and then it, as soon as everything started coming in, it started getting real nasty. Uh, that's usually how it works. I got a bunch of Gonna start sending some cattle out this week getting them sold and I'm Bringing some more cattle in but I think we probably had about an inch and a half of rain so far and it's It's just been hovering right above freezing. So I mean that's it's really hard on cattle. It's terribly hard for us uh, on our cattle because we go from warm to cold to warm to cold and then we get some moisture thrown in with it and it's instead of it just being kind of a constant it, it can become an issue real quick uh, my pins are empty uh, for the most part I got a few little there's some cows I've been buying uh, there's a bunch of calves out there eating silage but yeah, there's some cows I bought. They're hating life right now. They're uh, stuck in that feed pen, just uh, and it's a muddy mess. But really, don't have, haven't had any more cattle in the yard. I got a few calves there. This here's uh, a set of calves I've had for a while, but I, you know, just a muddy, muddy mess. I've been. I've been bedding these calves like crazy. Uh, one, because I have all the wheat straw and it's really beneficial for the cattle to bed them. And it gives them a warm spot to lay down. And these are some of my calves and my pickup's getting stuck. But yeah, they're, uh, they're enjoying the new wheat straw. But it's just a big old slop around here. And that's the, that's the, we're getting ready to start selling a bunch of calves, and that's kind of hard. This weather is terribly hard for that because it, you know, it, the cattle aren't gaining anything if they're if they're not losing weight. You're lucky, but that's you know that's the time of the year. That's one of the risks of taking cattle into this part of the year here. <coughs> now usually we don't get rainstorms in January, but we have had them. Now, and I say that, but we have we have had rain in uh, February, and I guess a little bit in January, but it's not real common. Uh, when I was a young kid, we had a bunch of yearlings come up out of Arkansas, and it had been really warm down there, and they were young calves, and they didn't have they didn't have any uh, fat around their internal organs. And they sent them to us in February, another pond. And they ended up, we had a rainstorm like this, and they ended up losing like 40 head. And then it, cause it started, it started raining and then it started snowing. And what happened is the cattle uh, died from hypothermia. And they, we lost like 40 head of them. They weren't ours, we were running for them. Running them for a, a guy. And we told them to get, uh, insurance on them 
And he said he did, but he didn't. And But the man run thousands and thousands of head of cattle, so it was kind of just one of those things. Uh, it was bad luck for him. But we were feeding them while it was raining and feeding them while it was snowing, and they just... It was it was a bad deal. Ugh, more mud. My poor horses. Now what I'm going to show you now is some calves I've been getting in. And uh, some in here. I opened it up where they could come into the barn because I thought I don't know how much snow we're supposed to get tomorrow. Uh, but kind of give them a dry place. I've heard anywhere from one to five to eight inches of snow, so it really just kind of depends on how uh, how far this uh, storm tracks over us. But I uh, my poor horses have to sit in this little pen by themselves, so the calves can come under this area, or else they would be able to come in here. So they're bored, cribbing on the damn fence, which that's never good, but I don't have anywhere else to go with them. Uh, I was going to go, I started buying these calves last week. Um, they're all, they're all 350 weight heifers out of uh, Alabama and Texas and pretty much all over the south. Uh, come from a couple different places and I got some more oh should be here in an hour or so but I uh, as you can see I bedded these pins down because they're just these calves are sopping wet and I don't want them I didn't mass treat any of these calves which usually uh, one outfit that I have buy for me usually I have them give them all shots when they buy them and I didn't do that this time because I'm trying to save money because uh, it's like 20 bucks a head and so and a lot of the cattle this year we were running uh, you know another 30 30 percent uh, retreat rate so I mean when you're mass treating that's 130 percent so that doesn't work um, these calves, uh, this is this is why people mass treat, is when you buy high risk calves and they're coming out of the south where it's warm and then they come into this shit and they get cold and they start dying. That's why, uh, usually why we mass treat. I didn't mass treat these so I don't have to baby the hell out of them. But we take good enough care of them I hope. I hope they do good. Uh, we'll see if I make any money on them. I probably, I'm probably what I'm gonna do. My master plan was to uh, just precondition these calves and sell them as a preconditioned cattle. But since they came in at the absolute worst time ever to come in. And I don't know what, uh, you know, how sick they're really going to get. Uh, it could be a disaster. It could not be a disaster. I could lose train loads of them. I could lose enough of them and have to doctor enough of them that I have to just run them as graze out wheat cattle or grass cattle or, or just leave them in the feed yard. So, yeah, um... The thing about buying calves like this, and this is for uh, you know kids getting into getting into the business, is they're high risk, but they could be they could be really really rewarding. But you have to understand that when you go and buy a flyweight calf, um, especially certain times of year, like right now, I mean it's it rained on them, it snowed on them. It's going to snow again on them. Uh, they they were on a truck for 24 hours. 
you know, they you can you can get a pretty high death loss, like a really high death loss, and you can lose. You can you can lose enough on them that you won't be able to be in agriculture anymore. Uh, just depending on how your bank is, to where you lose enough money, you're just you're not going to recover from it. So, um, if you're buying cattle, like I'm set up where. I mean, it's not, it's not good to lose money, but I've got some options that I can, you know, I can figure something out to at least get me back to break even, hopefully. I'd prefer the making money part, but you, uh, you gotta be really cautious about what you buy. Uh, these ones were the right price, and they were cheap. I mean, I guarantee you, they were... They were cheap, but uh, that's uh, that's kind of the thing. That they're they're light, so you got to put a lot of feed into them, and it can be uh, can be hard. It can be real hard. You can lose a lot of money real quick if they uh, they don't do what they should. I got a finally got a light in here. Uh, this didn't have a light. I need to just take this old fixture out. And then the other thing is I have my fireplace in, which it's doing, let me get my hot shot away from it, put it over here, kind of show you. We did this yesterday. So it's got a nice little fire going in it. Let me pull up my chair and we'll go from there. The other uh, thing is, is yeah, you know, I haven't put a video up. Oh, let's say probably in a week. Um, I've, I've recorded like three or four videos, but I just haven't put them up. You'll, uh, it's funny, if you do start doing some YouTube videos and you get some friends that do it too, you just meet them, however, uh, they'll tell you about videos they recorded and they won't put them up just cause, uh, we just, I know I've, here lately I've put up some videos that probably got a little more, uh, grumpy attitude than they should, and, uh, one video in particular that I did, uh, not yesterday, probably the day before. I was in here working on this, putting these uh, steel studs in. And I got to talking about uh, modern homesteading on a YouTube. You see a lot of that. And to be quite honest with you, I, I didn't have a, a nice thing to say about it at all. I was, I was wound up and in a terrible mood and uh not a video i want to put up because although no one really locally watches any of my stuff i just you know eventually they might and which is fine it doesn't bother me uh that somebody would but there's some things you just you don't want to be the guy who put something like that up i try to be very honest on this channel but uh I think instead of doing that is I will go and uh, take uh, some videos of the actual the homesteads that were on this ranch. Um, my family and then all of the other families because it was 160 acres to 320 depending on when they did it. And right now we're at a, our ranch itself is 12,000 acres. So that's, you know, you're looking at 35 to 50 people or 50 families actually and it's it's nothing it's nothing as glamorous as uh the people on youtube make out uh homesteading to be but i think instead of putting a real negative video out there i'll kind of i'll share what i know and some of the the things that are here uh that i actually have seen and 
know a little bit about of how what homesteading in this part of the world really was and uh you know I my family homesteaded and they lived in a dirt hole in the ground so I don't I don't think uh the modern homesteading is as cracked up to be as what people make it is I think they're kind of fooling fooling everybody but that's my opinion uh but I'll make some videos and kind of show you show you probably why I have that opinion and uh what what makes me have that opinion and give you some some history about you know some of the people that homesteaded in New Mexico because I, I think that's interesting but I've rambled on long enough and you guys can see my little fireplace now I'm just gonna wait for that load of calves to get here me and old me and old Pete Pete the kitty that's we'll kind of wait for that to get here and stay out of the cold but we finally you know I kind of wanted to show this we finally got this in and so this will be a part of the saddle shed series and this will be where we do our fireside chats for all of our our Q&A videos but and I don't know when I'll do another one of those maybe end of the month or something but yeah thanks for uh thanks for tuning in and getting to the end of this really long video I uh, hope you liked it you know, comment rate subscribe we do have a a Facebook now for the channel it doesn't really have anything on it but it's going to and you can always go there I'll put a this, I'll just link it in the description and go from there. So thanks for watching.